I farm an area that's wild, that feels ancient. It's been here for a lot longer than what I have. I think one of the attractive things about Carriage Works for me as a producer is that it connects provenance and produce. It connects a person, community, to a product, and it, it helps show how they're linked. So essentially, oysters are a direct result of their environment, and the estuaries in which I farm, being surrounded by national and state forests, have some of the cleanest water in Australia, and that's expressed in its flavour, in its composition, in its profile, which is encapsulated within the body of the oyster. I believe in catching wild caught spat. So what I do is I set up catching slats in the intertidal zone. Essentially all I'm doing there is creating substrate and habitat for the oyster to settle on. It's not a bad catch, which is good news. What I want people to know about rock oyster farming is about the process and the husbandry involved in creating a great oyster. Essentially the process takes me at Mimosa three to four years to finish, to catch, care for, shape, mature and grow out a rock oyster to market. And it's just a cycle of bringing in, sorting, putting back out, thinning out, pairing the right grades with the right grades. So during the course of that time, the three to four years it takes me to achieve a market oyster, that oyster's passed over my hand a minimum of at least 30 times. Full bodied oyster in this shell, showing all the hallmarks of a great rock oyster. Thousands of oysters running over my hands day in, day out, week in, week out, month in, month out. For someone to experience that, that taste, but also be able to conceptualise the environment and the emotional input associated with that is rare and it's unique. And so I'm grateful. I'm grateful to be able to share that with people at Carriage Works. <laughs>